Welcome to Explain, a series of health education programs published by the Patient Education Institute, the leading provider of interactive health education. This video includes general medical information and does not replace the medical advice of your doctor or healthcare provider. If you have questions pertaining to your medical condition, ask your doctor or healthcare provider. Cervical laminectomy and possible disc excision. Introduction. Neck pain, arm pain, and possible weakness in the arms and legs caused by disc herniation are common conditions that limit your ability to move and work. These symptoms may also be caused by the thickening of the ligaments of the cervical spine, a condition called cervical stenosis. Doctors may recommend surgery for people suffering from disc herniation in the neck and or cervical stenosis. If your doctor recommends surgical treatment for your condition, the decision whether or not to have surgery is also yours. This patient education module will help you understand the benefits and risks of this surgery. Anatomy The spine protects the spinal cord and nerves that go to different parts of the body. The spine is formed of solid vertebrae. The vertebrae are separated by softer discs. Symptoms and their causes Discs sometimes push on the nerves or spinal cord. This causes pain, weakness, and numbness in the neck and arms. This is how a normal spine looks if you cut it in the middle. It is known as a cross-section view. This is the disc. This is the nerve. This is the vertebra. This is how a cross-section of a herniated disc looks. Herniated discs may compress the nerves, producing pain and weakness in the neck and arms. The compression can also come from the thickening of the ligament behind the spinal cord. If the spinal cord or the nerves are compressed, the weakness and the numbness could involve both arms and possibly the legs. The control of the bladder and bowels can also be affected. Other terms used are herniation, extrusion, free fragment, or displacement. Arthritis can cause the discs or the vertebrae and ligaments to press on the nerves. Other terms used are spurs, stenosis, and spondylosis. The doctor uses an MRI of the neck to see the vertebrae, the discs, and the nerves. This MRI shows normal discs. This MRI shows a herniated disc. Sponsored by the Patient Education Institute. www.patient-education.com Over 5,000 videos and interactive tutorials. Alternative treatments. Use of a cervical collar may help reduce the symptoms. Physical therapy may also relieve the symptoms. Traction could also be used. Pain management using medications and injections of steroids around the nerves, also known as epidural or transforaminal injections, may also help. When all else fails, an operation may help. Surgical treatment. The disc is approached from the back of the neck. An incision is made in the skin and down to the spine. The operation consists of removing a small part or all of the covering of the spinal cord and nerves from the back of the neck, depending on how much pressure it is exerting on the spinal cord. This takes the pressure off the nerves and spinal cord and is known as unroofing of the spine. The covering consists of bone and ligaments. When only part of the bone covering the nerves is taken out, the operation is called a foraminotomy. When the bone covering the spinal cord on both sides is taken out, the operation is called a laminectomy. The spurs and discs may be taken out at the same time and more room is made for the nerves and or spinal cord. 
Your doctor will tell you how long you are likely to stay in the hospital after the surgery. This depends on several factors, such as your age and medical condition. Depending on how well you do, you may go home the same day or after spending a night or two at the hospital. Risks and complications. This operation is very safe. There are, however, several possible risks and complications which are unlikely but possible. You need to know about them just in case they happen. By being informed, you may be able to help your doctor detect complications early. The risks and complications include those related to anesthesia and those related to any type of surgery. Risks of general anesthesia include nausea, vomiting, urinary retention, cut lips, chipped teeth, sore throat, and headache. More serious risks of general anesthesia include heart attacks, strokes, and pneumonia. Your anesthesiologist will discuss these risks with you and ask you if you're allergic to certain medications. Blood clots in the legs can occur due to inactivity during and after the surgery. These usually show up a few days after surgery. They cause the leg to swell and hurt. Blood clots can become dislodged from the leg and go to the lungs where they will cause shortness of breath, chest pain, and possibly death. It is extremely important to let your doctors know if any of these symptoms occur. Sometimes the shortness of breath can happen without warning. Getting out of bed shortly after surgery may help decrease the risk of blood clots in the legs. Some of the risks are seen in any type of surgery. These include infection deep in the disc space or at the skin level, bleeding, a skin scar that may be painful or ugly. Other risks and complications are related specifically to this surgery. These are also very rare. However, it is important to know about them. The spinal cord and nerves can be injured, resulting in stroke, paralysis, weakness, and decreased sensation involving the arms, legs, or the whole body. It is very rare, but sexual dysfunction may occur. This can be temporary or permanent. Fluid may also leak from around the nerves. There is also the possibility that the operation may not help the symptoms or may even make them worse. This operation may weaken the spine and cause it to become unstable or deformed. In the rare case when this happens, another operation may be needed to fuse the spine. After the surgery. No repetitive bending or twisting of the neck or heavy lifting is allowed in the few weeks following the operation. You may be required to wear a cervical collar for a period determined by your physician. After this period of relative rest, physical therapy may be necessary to allow you to resume your previous activities. Whether or not you will be able to resume all previous activities depends on how well you're doing at the time of your follow-up. Your doctor will tell you how long it will take before your neck is completely healed and when you can go back to work. This depends on your age, type of work, and medical condition, as well as other factors. If you like this video, please like and share. For similar videos, subscribe to our channel. Summary Neck surgery can help relieve your pain and weakness when other non-surgical treatments fail. This operation is very safe with excellent results. However, as you have learned, complications may happen. Knowing about them will help you detect them early if they happen. Thank you for using Explain.